Hey everybody, my name is Christopher Odd, and thanks again to Paradox Interactive. I'm back to talk to you about some advanced combat tactics in the Lamplighters League. In our previous video, we covered off the basics of combat. So if you're unfamiliar with tactics games, I highly recommend watching that video first. In this video, we're going to dive into a few mechanics that are unique to the Lamplighters League. So grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now that you're relaxed, let's talk about the stress system in Lamplighters League. Uh, whenever any unit is attacked, they're going to accrue a point of stress. Stress is represented by the pips above the unit's health bars. It's important to know that hits and misses accrue the same amount of stress. So if an enemy is nearing maximum stress, it might be worth using a low percentage attack just to encourage a stress break. And what's a stress break? Well, I'm glad you asked. Stress breaks are slightly different for enemy units compared to our agents. Some enemies will flee and cower for a turn, while other enemies will go berserk and attack a nearby target for a turn. Friend or foe? So plan wisely. Additionally, when a nearby enemy is stress broken, your agents get access to a special move called Finisher. Now, Finisher is a melee move that will kill all units except for Scions with one hit. This stress broken state only lasts for two turns, so you want to make sure you're in position to capitalize on your Finisher moves. Stress breaks on our agents operate slightly differently though. In combat, you'll lose one AP on their next turn. It's bad, but not world ending bad, right? Well, sort of. Here's the worst news. After a mission where an agent had a stress break, they'll be dealt a breaking card. A breaking card covers up one of the current cards in the agent's tableau and also applies a negative effect on your character as long as it remains there. But there'll be much more on breaking cards in a future video, so stay tuned for that. So how can you manage agent stress then? For one, you remove two stress each time you clear an encounter zone, and you recover all stress when you complete a mission. Specific agents like Alex can cause more stress, while other agents like Judith, Fadir, and Latif can actually remove it. Now, one agent named Celestine can do both, and in fact, it's a key part of her kit. Do with that information what you will, cause all the stress, have fun with it. That's all I'm going to say on the topic for now, but I recommend subscribing to the channel to be updated when Raptor's video about the undrawn hand drops, and that's going to cover off some of those breaking cards that we spoke about earlier. Now let's move into some of the different damage types that you're going to see in the Lamplighters League. Shock is one of the first elemental damage types that you'll run into very early on in the tutorial, actually. You'll learn that Shock will apply Shock damage for a few rounds and add a significant speed debuff of 50%. This is especially useful for dealing with melee attackers that can cover a lot of ground and give you time to deal with them before they actually reach you. Now, shock damage is mainly going to be applied from shock lures that your saboteur carries, but keep your out for shock grenades that anybody can use. Now, many games have bleed damage, and Lamplighter's League is no different there, but where games vary is in what that bleed status actually does. Uh, bleeding is best applied to enemies in Lamplighter's League that require movement to be effective, since its damage is only applied when a unit moves or uses melee abilities. There's a couple of ways to apply bleeding, but a special shout out to our agent Anna Sophia, who can do this through her own abilities. Let's look at poison next. It's a specialty of our agent Celestine, who can not only apply it, but also benefit from attacking enemies already poisoned. Poison, poison units will take damage and stress each turn they remain poisoned. And of course, we can't talk damage types without talking about burning. This is the most straightforward of the elemental damage types, and it's most easily applied by using a firebomb. Units that are burning simply take damage each turn that they remain burning. In addition to damage types, there's a ton of different status conditions that you'll learn about in Lamplighter's League. In our Combat Basics video, I explained how evade stacks work. Today, we'll focus on three different ones, namely blinded, knocked down, and marked. There's a whole lot more, but I can't cover them all in one video. Blinded is extremely powerful and can really turn the tides of combat, for either side, mind you. If a unit becomes blinded, each of their attacks has a 50% reduction in chance to hit. You'll have plenty of time to experiment with this very early on in your campaign too, as two of our three starting agents can apply blinded to enemy units. Staying with statuses that impact your chance to hit, marked enemies are much easier to hit. If a unit becomes marked, the chances to hit them increases by 15%. Now, Latif can apply the marked status for enemies, while Eddie and Pernima can both apply marked and 
gain additional benefits by attacking marked enemies. For example, Eddie's Bullseye ability does bonus damage versus marked enemies, and Pranima's Kill Shot ability grants her an additional AP for shots that hit a marked target. Lastly, let's talk about the Knockdown status. In my opinion, one of the most potent statuses in Lamplighter's League, Knockdown units can't perform actions until they're back on their feet. In order to get back up, Knockdown units must use an AP, or an ally can use an AP to bring them back up, and it ends their turn, making them highly vulnerable. Think of this like a stun. Three of our agents, Ingrid, Judith, and Fadir, can cause knockdown. Ingrid's limited use special ability called Onslaught sees her target in AoE, she runs over, Too she bad, sweep boys. kicks, and knocks the enemies to the ground. Very powerful, so use this wisely. But remember too, some enemies are immune to knockdown. So again, use that recon mode to check enemy resistances often. Let's wrap up today's video talking about something called Mortal Danger. Sounds terrifying, and it is. Hopefully, by taking the things you've learned in these combat videos and applying them to your own game, you'll be able to avoid this. But inevitably, once an agent drops to zero health, they'll be in mortal danger. They're unable to fight or even move, and if a teammate doesn't stabilize them within three rounds, they will be lost. If you stabilize the agent, they'll return to action with the dazed status, and they'll have reduced health. Days means that they're going to have one less AP for a round. If you successfully complete the mission, but an agent was in mortal danger during it, they'll be wounded afterwards. Being wounded requires recovery time, or if you're risky, you can go out to another mission with reduced health. So make sure you take care of your agents. Thanks again for watching, everybody. I'll be back with another video soon Come about some me. party building considerations in Lamplighter's League. Remember to subscribe to both this channel for new tutorials, and my own over at youtube.com slash ChristopherRod for a full playthrough of the Lamplighters League. Thank you so much. Check out the links below for everything Lamplighters League, and we'll talk to you very soon.